Hello friends, welcome back to REST API interview questions. As you know that we have already covered some of the questions in the last video. Very first question, can you tell the disadvantages of RESTful web services? First one, as the services follow the idea of statelessness, so it is not possible to maintain sessions. I have mentioned the same point in the last video as well, right? So this is the feature or the characteristics of a REST API. That REST APIs are statelessness. It means that you cannot maintain the session at the server side. So now if we have to maintain, like if it is your requirement to maintain the session, then you have to do that at client side. So now it is the responsibility of the REST client to maintain the user session. Next point, REST does not impose security restrictions. It inherits the security measures of the protocols implementing it. Hence, care must be chosen to implement security measures like integrating SSL, PLS based authentication, etc. So, guys, you know that REST is based on what? It basically follows the HTTP protocol for the implementation. So, but HTTP is by default not secure. So, you have to go and make use of HTTPS. Apart from that, you have to write your own code to secure your data. Like, you can go and make use of Spring Security or any other way to protect your data, right? But the point is, it's your responsibility to secure or to provide security to your data. Okay. By default, REST does not impose any security restrictions. Let's move. While creating URI for web services, what are the best practices that needs to be followed? One of the very important interview questions. So guys, there are certain rules or certain guidelines that you must follow. Very first one is, while defining the resources, use plural nouns for example to identify user resource you should use the name users for that particular resource okay say for example if i go to if you look at the end point right what i've used i have used students not student okay so that is what the rule number one says that you have to go and make use of the plural okay it says use plural nouns clear while using the long name for resources use underscore or hyphen Avoid using spaces between words. For example, to define authorized users resource, the name can be authorized underscore users or authorized hyphen users. Okay. So second rule is you should avoid using space in between words. You got it, right? Next one is the URI is cache insensitive, but like as part of good practice, it is recommended to use lowercase letters only. Next. While developing URI, the backward compatibility must be maintained. Okay, so when the URI is updated, the older URI must be redirected to the new one using the HTTP status code 300. Okay, so point is if you have got the new version of your API, make sure that you still support the older version as well. Okay, so the backward compatibility must be maintained. Next good practice is use appropriate HTTP methods like get, put, delete patch etc it is not needed or recommended to use these method names in the uri for example like you have to fetch user details right so the right way to do is slash users and then you pass the id path variable instead of slash get user so basically in your endpoint right you should avoid using these methods like get put or delete kind of things okay next one is use the technique of forward slashing to indicate the hierarchy between the resources and the collections say for example we have got facebook users and i want to fetch a particular post right so what i will do my endpoint would look like something like this slash users and then here i'll pass the id of the particular user and then slash post to get all the posts in case if i'm looking for any specific post what i will do i will use another slash and then post id okay so basically it's a good practice to use the forward slashing to indicate the hierarchy between the resources all right next question what are idempotent methods so the meaning of idempotent is that even after calling a single request multiple times the outcome of the request should be same and guys it is the responsibility of the developers to design idempotent apis so it depends how do you write your code how do you develop the rest apis okay so guys we have got get put delete had options and trace all these http methods are idempotent i'll explain how and why okay so methods like get options trace and head are idempotent 
because they do not change the state of resources on the server they are meant for resource retrieval whenever called okay they do not result in write operations on the server they are making it idempotent get is idempotent why if i am making a get call to one particular endpoint every time i'll get the same result let me give an example guys what do you see here i have got my endpoint here okay where id equals to 1 say for example i am passing id equals to 2 and i am going to make a get call okay let me click on send i have got my result trisan let me do it again i have got my same result trisan let me just go and make another get call still same result okay so guys that's why we call get as adempted function i can call this particular endpoint 10 times 20 times 100 times my result won't change okay my result is going to be same all right guys next is post is not idempotent because post apis are usually used for creating a new resource on the server so while calling post methods n times there will be n new records this does not result in the same outcome at a time okay now see here guys i am going to make a post call okay we are going to add a resource where id equals to 7 if I go and click on send, we have resource 201 created. Okay. Now, guys, let's assume that this ID is auto increment. If it is auto generated, okay. If the ID is generated, auto generated, so I don't have to pass primary key, right? In that case, every time I'm hitting this post endpoint, I will have a new resource into the database. 8, then 9, and then 10. So continuously, so every time you're hitting a this particular endpoint every time it will go and create a new resource into the database with new id okay so guys post is not idempotent remember this particular thing okay all right next is put so guys put methods are generally used for what for updating the state of a resource okay we use put function to update the existing resource if you call a put method n times the first request update the resource and the subsequent requests will be overwriting the same resource again and again without changing anything. Hence, put methods are idempotent. So, very first time when you go and hit the put call, it will update the resource. But after that, there will not be any change in the state of the object. Okay, let me show you guys. Say I am here, I want to update the details of object 7. Okay, so I am going to make a call post 7. So, if I go and check the earlier value for this particular resource, resource 7 was having first name was Virat, second name was Kali, and email was virat at the rate okjava.com. Right, but after performing the put operation, the very last time I changed to Anushka Kali, and the email ID has changed to virat.kali at the rate gmail.com. Right, so this was my first hit. Now, if I go and make the same call, I am going to perform the put operation again, second time, third time fourth time fifth time sixth time the result is still same i don't see any change right that's why put is also idempotent function but you have to mention that for the very first time when you perform the put operation it will go and update the state of the object but after that all the subsequent transactions will have no impact it won't change the state of the object clear next is delete so delete methods are said to be idempotent because when calling them for n times the first request result in successful deletion status code 200 and the next subsequent request result in nothing status code 204 the response is different but there is no change of the resources on the server side if i am going to hit the delete function so for the first time it will delete the record right but after that because we don't even have the record in the database it won't change the state of the object because the object itself is not there that's why we call it idempotent so guys when you say that put is idempotent you have to mention your point that first very first time it will go it will update the resource and then after in the subsequent trans transactions there will not be any change in the state of the object similarly while performing delete operation in the very first operation it will go and delete the resource but after that there will not be any change in the state of the data at the server side clear let me show you guys all right guys i am going to delete resource where id equals to 7 so this is my first call i have got status code 200 and what it says student 7 deleted okay so this was a success call now if i go and hit this endpoint again and again what's going to happen 
I am getting no record found. Okay, because this is how I have handled in my code. Before deleting the resource, I am checking whether this particular resource exists or not. If it does not exist, return 404. All right, guys. So point is delete when you perform for the first time, it will delete the record from the database. But after that, it will not have any impact on the data. You got it, right? All right, guys. Let's move. Next question. What is the difference between idempotent and safe HTTP methods? Safe methods are those that do not change any resource internally. These methods can be cached and can be retrieved without any effects on the server. Idempotent methods are those methods that do not change the responses to the resources externally. They can be called multiple times without any change in the responses. Okay. Here we have a quick table, you guys can go through it. Next question, can you tell what constitutes the core components of HTTP request? So guys, this request can be your get, put, post, delete, whatever, right? So we are talking about the main components or core components of HTTP request to perform HTTP operations, get, put, post, delete, whatever it is, right? So the format is you will have HTTP method like verb, the operation that you're going to perform like get, put, post, like so for example, post. Then you will have your endpoint where you want to perform the post operation. Okay. Like for example, HTTP colon double, double slash colon localhost colon 8080 slash students. Okay. To perform the post operation. Then you will have HTTP version saying like 1.0 or 1.1, 1.2. Then request header where you can pass like uh, the message body or the format supported by the clients, right? You can pass the accept tag and those things, right? Then you will have request body where you will have the actual data. For example, we are going to make a post score, right? So we'll pass the object here. Like for example, student uh, ID, first name, last name, email, and those kind of information in the JSON or the XML format. Okay. So these are the main components of HTTP request. You have got HTTP verb, HTTP method, then URI, HTTP version, request header, and request body. Okay. Method or verb. So this tells that what methods the request operation represents, like get, put, post, delete etc okay uri so this part is used for uniquely identifying the resources on the server basically the endpoint http version so this indicates the version of http protocol that we are using for example 1.1 okay request header so this has the details of the request metadata such as client type the content format like json or xml message format cache settings etc then we have got request body so this is to represent the actual message content to be sent to the server. All right, again. So every single re HTTP request has got five components: method, URI, HTTP version, request header, request body. All right. Similarly, there can be a question on what constitutes the core components of HTTP response. So you will have HTTP version like 1.0, 1.1, response code, response header, and response body. Okay. So response status code so this represent the status code for the requested resource for example say 200 is success 201 resource created like that 400 represents client error 404 resource not found 500 internal server error so status code will have the code which will have some meaning okay then http version this indicates the protocol version response header same thing this header has the metadata of the response message Data can be described what is the content length, content type, response date, what is server type, etc. And then we have got the response body. So this part will contain the actual data that written from the server. Say for example, if I am making a GET call, I am expecting the object in the response. Okay. So HTTP response has got four components, status code, HTTP protocol version, response header and response body all right guys so we are done with this video i'll cover rest of the interview questions in the next video thank you for watching and please do share and subscribe with your friends thank you